Welcome everyone. I want to do a little follow-up video to the live stream that we did on Tuesday where we detailed the new HANA tooling features in the Business Application Studio. One of the common questions that we had had to do with the uh, integration or combination of both Cloud Application Programming Model projects and HANA projects. HANA being the persistence for Cloud Application Programming Model and the ability to mix HANA native artifacts like calculation views into your CAP models means that you probably want one project and one workspace where you can do both types of development. And right now, that's a little bit complicated because we have the separate dev space for HANA and we have the separate dev space for Cloud Application Programming Model. And to be honest, the two projects don't work perfectly with each other yet, each other's set of tools. Uh, but what we have is a, is a pretty nice workaround from development that involves um, restructuring the standard folder structure of your CAP application uh, so that it will be compliant with the way the HANA tools expect. And we'll need to use this for the next couple months until a more permanent solution is provided by development. What I'd like to do today is walk you through the process of using this workaround. So we're going to start from the very beginning here, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new dev space. I already have a HANA dev space, but I'm going to I'm going to choose the uh, cloud business application dev, spe dev space so I can do uh, CAP projects. And you'll see I get all the uh, CAP tooling, you know, CDS tools and um, uh, Java tools and so forth uh, in this view. But what I'm going to want to go ahead and do is I'll add the CDS graphical modeler. Uh, but I'll add the uh, calculation view, which then imports the HANA tools. Um, just in case I might need it down the road, I'll go ahead and add the HANA smart data integration tools as well. And uh, not required for the HANA or necessarily the CAP scenario, but I like to have the ability to add extra extensions into my dev space. So I'll go ahead and choose that tool as well. Um, so what I've I've got here now is if I've got a dev space that is going to be primarily the, the CAP dev space, but we'll also have all the additional HANA tools in it as well. And I'll go ahead and create this dev space. This will take just a second. Uh, we'll pause the video and once it's done here, you know, in 30 seconds or so, I'll start it up and we'll continue with the video. Okay, now that my new dev space is uh, at a running sta state, I'm able to go ahead and launch it. So let's uh, go on in there. It will be an empty dev space at first. I haven't created any projects. And there we have the ability to start our development. Now, if we say start from template, you see we're going to have the choice of HANA database projects or CAP projects. <clears throat> if we want to do the combination of two, if you want to use the cloud application programming model but have HANA native artifacts in it, then you want to start with a CAP project because we're going to need the additional CAP builder and, and editors and things like that. So we're going to choose a cap project. I'll start that wizard. And it doesn't really matter what name I give it here. Uh, I am going to do Node.js development. But the important part here is that you need to be sure to check configuration for SAP HANA development because that's you know what we want to pl uh, deploy into. But you also need to make sure that you choose that it's going to be an MTA project because the HANA tooling in the business application studio expects the MTA YAML file and it reads its configuration about the project structure and things like that from the MTA YAML. And without this, uh, the MTA YAML configuration file, uh, the, the HANA tooling won't work. Now, optionally, I'm going to go ahead and choose the basic sample files just so I have some content to work with. I'm not really interested in doing the, the actual modeling in this in this demonstration, more about the project setup and getting things to build. So I'll just use the basic sample files to get me started. And we'll go ahead and say finish. The project has been generated and we'll open it in our workspace. And what we have here is a standard CAP application which if you've done CAP development recently, particularly in the Business Application Studio, you'll know 
that uh, it uses a little different folder structure than what we used to use in the web IDE. It generates its content not within the DB or the service folder, but it goes into a separate gen DB. And it gets that configuration. We'll, we'll see it here. That's the default configuration, but the wizard uh, also set the, uh, uh, the folder pass for the individual modules, the MTE YAML, to point to gen SRV. You know, and if I were to come here and I would do a npn install, and then do a uh, CVS build. You see when it builds its artifacts, it's deploying them into the gen folder here, right? And we don't want the content to go into the gen folder. We want it to go back into the source folder of DB and SRV, because that's what the HANA tooling is expecting, the folder structure. So now I want to show you how to adjust the MTA YAML and the package JSON uh, to reconfigure the project away from the way it's set at default, but in a way that will work better with HANA development. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is change these target paths in our MTA YAML to point to just the SRV and the DB folder. So we'll go ahead and save that. And right away, you see the SAB HANA projects view changes as now looking at the DB folder to, to uh, find its database content and do its uh, deployment, for instance. But this wouldn't work totally yet because if we do our CDS build, it's still generating the content into the gen folder. We need to get CDS to also know about this change. And in order to do that, we need to come to the package JSON and we need to make a few changes to the package JSON. So first of all, I need to come down here to CDS requires DB kind and we need to go ahead and change this to HANA anyway. And I also need CDS add a section here for build and tell it that our target for building is now just a dot and that will cause the CDS build to target back into the source folder structure. So instead of creating a separate gen slash DB or gen slash SRV, we'll generate the DB artifacts back into DB and actually create a gen folder underneath the DB module and create a separate gen folder under the SRV module as well. And the last change that I need to make is actually um, right here under the requires, I can go ahead and add a HANA section. And this is just required because we're using HANA Cloud. I need to say deploy format and HDB table. There we are. I think that's all the changes that I need to the package JSON. And now if I come to the root of the project and I do a CDS build, what you're going to see is now it targets the content into DB source or uh, D DB source gen or SRV gen. And we no longer need this gen folder. We can get rid of it. That, that was just me testing that out. And our content is now nestled nicely inside the uh, into the source gen and the CDS build is only going to regenerate that folder structure and lower the, the, the source gen folder. So we're not going to have the problem of it wiping out our ENV file anymore either. Uh, and that was the major part of the problem with, uh, with directing things back over to the older gen folder. Now, the last thing that we need to do before we can, um, uh, uh, really do a deploy. Well, first of all, I need to do a binding and I'll go ahead and do this. This is just standard uh, usage of the HANA project. There we are. 
got right that time. And I'm going to create a new service instance for this, a brand new project. I'll just go with the default generated name and we'll give that a second to create the service. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, so we don't stand here and just watch the progress bar go. I'll pause the video and we'll resume once this is complete. And here we are 45, 50 seconds or so later, the HDI container instance has been created. It is bound to our project. And we would be ready to deploy our content into the database. Um, but there's one last thing that we need to do. Uh, the folder structure did not create a package JSON uh, that with a reference to the HDI deployer, which is something we need in the DB folder now that we're uh, deploying it with this different folder structure. Now, if we'd created a pure HANA project, it would have created that package JSON for us. Uh, but because we're using cat project, we didn't get it. Uh, so we need to add it. You can, of course, add it by hand. But there's actually a command here in the HANA CLI. If you have that tool installed uh, to say HANA CLI uh, create module. And this will create all the files for us. So if we just say HANA CLI uh, create module. What that did is that updated our DB folder and added the package JSON to it with the necessary um, information to, uh, to allow us to deploy into the database. So that saves you a little bit of a manual step. Now, just to prove to you that this all works now, let me do another CDS build. And if you remember from our live stream the other day, when I did a CDS build on a cap project, if you use the centralized gen folder, it wipes out the ENV file and you have to always rebind. But because we're using this different folder structure, now everything works great. I'm able to run a CDS build and it doesn't disrupt the, the binding or the ENV file. And I can now come here to my project and say deploy and it will start the deployer. And there we are, deployed to the database successfully. And likewise, we can use the open HDI container to launch the database explorer and take us to our particular HDI container instance. And we can already see oh, that's some stuff left over from a previous work I was doing, but this sample content, the bookshop books has been deployed into the HANA database and there's the content.